Hi guys, welcome to my channel Matt Van Gier. Today we're in Springbok in the northern Cape of South Africa and last night we went out road cruising and we got some really cool results. So that's not so nice, we've had two D on the road, dead on the road. Tiger snake and now a half snake. So let's hopefully we get a live snake. Lots of dead snakes unfortunately for this area. Uh, the ratio was way off. We had a lot more dead snakes than live snakes. And I'm going to give you an example of the species that we found most often. And uh, as well as one that was extremely rare that I'd never ever think I'd, I'd ever see in my lifetime considering the rarity of it and its, uh, its habits of being very fossorial and hardly ever being seen by people. first snake that I'm going to show you guys unfortunately is a dead snake but I couldn't not show you guys this specimen due to its rarity. So here we have a Fisk's house snake. This is one of the rarest snakes in South Africa. It's an endemic species to South Africa only occurring in the Karoo, in the Nama Karoo around here in the Northern Cape and in isolated pockets scattered across the country on the eastern, on the western side. There's been very few of them that have actually been collected and to be able to actually study this animal is near impossible. So a lot of its habits and behavior, etc., is very unknown, except from a few captive individuals and the individuals that have been found road cruising around these areas. That's also obviously not taking into account the numbers of people that might actually poach these little snakes. Now they are absolutely stunning and very, very unique in terms of snakes of South Africa. And you can see how beautiful the coloration is of that snake. It's got those brown blotches with a very bright yellow creamy color on the top, which creates a kind of bandy effect and absolutely incredible little snake. Now, unfortunately, it is dead. These snakes don't get much longer than around 20 to 30 centimeters and hardly ever exceeding 40 centimeters. Again, um, from the very few records that we do have, we're not entirely sure what a large specimen of this would look like, but from species or specimens that have been collected, that is the rough size that they, that they reach. Now these snakes are very fossorial, living underground in rodent burrows, in little holes, rock crevices, etc. So very difficult to find. They, did, they tend to come out uh, during the night time, so meaning they must be completely nocturnal, coming out during the early hours of the morning or after some rains uh, when it's a little bit cooler. They'll come, out, they'll come out and cruise around the roads and look around for some prey. Now these guys are, are supposedly uh, specialist skink and gecko eaters, considering with the habitat they live in and also due to their size, they probably won't be able to take many rodent species so I would assume that even these as youngsters would maybe even eat insects or invertebrates. But who knows in terms of its biology and habits, there's been no studies conducted on these guys. I would say they are kind of locally abundant in the areas that they occur, but because of its habits and nature, they're very rarely seen by South African or by, they're very rarely seen by people, which is uh, one of the reasons that's so sought after and also one of the reasons people would love to see this. This is a real lifer. I've been uh, looking at uh, field guides since I was a young boy and this was one of the snakes because you saw the arrow that was pointing to the marks where they were found um, was bigger than the actual dot that they were found. Since then the range has extended a little bit. They have been seen in other areas besides uh, the area I'm in at the moment. So they've got isolated little fragmented pockets of populations for these guys but Again, due to the lack of research, probably very little is known about how, where, where it actually inhabits and what habitats it inhabits. So here we have a pretty common species of, of snake in South Africa, probably one of the most widespread snakes in South Africa after the puff adder. And we have here a brown house snake. 
which is Amprophis capensis, and it's actually been changed recently to Boedan capensis. So here we have it, a little tiny brown house snake. Now these guys get a lot smaller in this locality due to the, the region being so arid and prey items being a little bit few and far between and also not being as large of prey items as they get in their tropical habitats. Now these guys occur all across South Africa from KwaZulu-Natal in more subtropical regions all the way here through to the Namakaru in the really, really arid regions. And it's a beautiful little snake, completely nocturnal as well. And this guy we found cruising on the side of the road. We actually stopped to help a Bibron's gecko off the road. And uh, whilst we were releasing the Bibron's, uh, we ended up finding this guy, which is really, really cool. And a cool, very cool surprise to be able to find something when you're not looking for it. There's a snake, there's a snake, there's a snake. Oh, brown house. Uh -huh. We were filming the, the geckos and yeah. found a brown house snake. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the bug eyed one as well. Yeah. Now we've seen a lot of these guys dead on the road, which is really unfortunate. These guys and the next snake I'm going to show you have been the most common snakes we've seen on the roads, dead and squashed. So really not cool to see. These guys are quite variable in colour across South Africa. In KwaZulu-Natal they're a far maroonier colour than these guys here. These guys are a little bit more buggy eyed and that's maybe due to their higher nocturnal activities here due to during the days it's actually too hot for them to actually cruise around. So they've got a little bit more buggy eyed here in the Namakuru than they do in uh, KwaZulu-Natal and they're also a far lighter colour. You can see how light this little snake is. In uh, KwaZulu-Natal you get a lot of white markings along the sides of the body, on the upper third of the body as well as around the heads. She still has it, but it's quite reduced at the moment. We did find a dead one that uh, had still the lines down the side, which is really, really stunning with the bug eyed and the lines coming down the side. It makes for a really stunning little snake. Now out here, I would say these snakes don't reach more than about 60 to 70 centimeters, with large specimens maybe being the 80, 90 centimeter zone. The Cuisine de Tal brown house snakes have been known to reach about 1.2 to 1.5 meters on the large scale due to their availability of large frogs and toads and things like that and rats and mice that they can get that side. Here yeah, these guys on the large end will probably be feeding on uh, sengi, some uh, elephant shrews as well as little rodents, rats and then they'll eat skinks and geckos and things like that as well in these rock crevices that they inhabit. Often found near human dwellings due to it's fondness for mammalian prey, rats and mice and things like that which tend to frequent human habitation. So these guys really enjoy a good rat and mouse. People think most snakes are always venomous or out to get them and these guys will then get their heads chopped off. These guys will get preyed on by a multitude of other animals, birds especially. Your Cape file snake will feed on these snakes, little cobras, even big cobras will feed on the larger adults. So these guys are preyed on by multiple species, mongoose, honey badgers, pretty much anything that can get its mouth on this guy it will slick it down like a nice little piece of spaghetti. Really beautiful little snake. I really enjoy these guys. It's nice to be able to handle snakes sometimes and not always work with venomous. So here we have your brown house snake out here in Springbok in the northern Cape of South Africa and uh, I think I'll put it back and then we'll get on to the next species. So here we have the beet tiger snake, Telescopus beetsy. And these are stunning little snakes, absolutely gorgeous. Now there's quite a bit of variability between each of them, you can see here. So here we have a more orangey one, and then you have this really yellow one. It's very reduced pattern. Oh, look, he wants to strike it himself in the reflection of the camera. So there you have, oh, another one. He's also striking at the camera. So really, really cool little snakes, absolutely stunning. You can see why they're called tiger snakes. 
due to this amazing coloration that they have. And they're quite variable. As you can see, this one's quite a nice orangey color where this is more of a creamy yellow color going on here. Really, really stunning. You can see how much more reduced of pattern this one has versus this one. Beatsy is quite unique in that some of them, not all of them, have this little black dot on top of their head. So you can see that guy there has a little black dot on his head, whereas this one, it's completely absent. They don't get much bigger than this, between 40 to 60 centimeters is adult size. They have a far more restricted range, all the way from the Northern Cape, a little bit into the Eastern Cape, and up into Namibia. They have quite a bit of variation within their range, uh, different shades of the yellow and creamy colors, etc. Their preferred habitat is here in the Namakaru. They do occur up into the deserts of Namibia, but are completely absent from pure, true deserts. So they like these rocky outcroppings where you have some vegetation. Oh, hello. And these are completely nocturnal snakes sitting in this environment here now. We road cruised this road last night and saved these guys from the road. So we bagged them and now we've brought them straight back to the location where we have found them. So really, really cool snakes. These guys are specialist gecko and lizard eaters. They'll cruise these rock crevices at night and look for their prey items. They've also got extremely good night vision with those elliptical night vertical slits in their pupils. These guys are viviparous, laying anywhere between 7 to 12, 13 eggs, which they'll lay in between some vegetation or inside a mole hole or a rodent burrow or something of the sort at which point eggs will incubate and then hatch within a couple of months. Now, these are mildly venomous snakes, rear fanged snakes. These are colubrids, so usually no reason to be worried about this venom. The protein is more targeted to reptilian prey, which is your geckos and lizards and things like that. So these guys, it's not an issue to get bit by, but again, I never recommend allowing a snake to bite you because you never know how your body might react. Colubrid snakes can have a certain protein that you can be allergic to, just like a bee sting. And I know of people who've been bitten by colubrids thinking nothing of it and going into anaphylactic shock. So things can change very quickly. You can see how defensive and strikey the snake is at the moment. All it wants to do is really just cruise away. This is a lifer for me as well, first time out in this area. So very exciting to be able to work with these beautiful little creatures. So here we have the two beautiful beads tiger snakes. Amazingly cool little snakes. Really, really love them. And on that note, guys, if you like this video, please do hit the subscribe button, hit that notifications bell, and stay tuned for the next species of snake and reptile we found out here in Expedition South Africa. And remember, I stand for what we stand on.